Today I'm creating a vacuum chamber out of 2 inch PVC and silicone. This is an original design which I created for casting silicone molds and casting resin figures. I start by using a step bit to drill a hole in a 2 inch PVC end cap. I drill the hole just large enough to thread in an 8 inch bar fitting. Next, I'm cutting a 2 inch section of 2 inch PVC pipe. Then I also cut two 1 half inch sections of the 2 inch pipe. On a 2 inch end cap, I mark approximately 1 inch from the cap opening and place it onto a scrap piece of PVC. Then I slice one of the 1 half inch PVC sections and slide it on to this scrap pipe as well. Then I do the same to the other 1 half inch PVC section. This will act as a spacer against the saw fence in order to cut the end cap squarely. Using graph paper, I find and mark on exact opposite sides of the 2 inch PVC section. Then using a piece of angle iron, I extend the line down the length of the section. and rolling the pipe, I do the same on the opposite side. Using a hacksaw, I carefully cut along the line down the length, stopping just short of cutting through the pipe wall. Turning the section, I repeat this on the opposite side. I pause to mark the piece for reference. After cutting through the pipe wall, I turn the piece again and complete the cut on the first side leaving me with two identical halves. I use a utility knife to remove the burrs from the two halves. I quickly test fit the two halves together with one of the end caps. Next, I draw a center line along the edge of one of the halves. Then I use a hacksaw to carefully cut a channel along the edge approximately 1 16th inch deep. I repeat this process along all four edges of the two halves. Using a tube of clear silicone, I trim the tip for a flow of approximately 3 sixteenths of an inch. Then I apply a thin bead of silicone along the edge and into the channel. The channel will allow the silicone to bond more securely to the PVC. Then while the silicone is still wet, I use a small piece of rubber to form a slight crown across the entire edge. It's critical that the silicone crown is consistent across the entire edge, approximately 1 16th inch high. Then I repeat this process on all four edges. 
I set the two halves aside and let the silicone cure overnight. With the barb fitting removed, I marked the other 2 inch PVC cap and cut it in the same way as the first. Next, I cut a small piece of cardstock with a utility knife, which I will use to screed and remove excess silicone. I notched the piece of cardstock the thickness of the sidewall of the PVC cap. Then I measure the depth of the notch so that it stays short of the inside by approximately 3 sixteenths of an inch. I trim the silicone nozzle to allow approximately one quarter inch flow. Then I run a bead of silicone around the upper inside edge of the PVC cap. I make two passes around to get the proper thickness. Then, using the screed, I work it carefully around the edge, applying slight pressure in the direction of the arrow mark. It's critical that the surface be smooth, so I make a second pass to carefully remove any high spots in the silicone. I use the same process to complete the second PVC cap. After letting the silicone cure overnight, I carefully remove any residual silicone from the inner sidewall of the caps. After reinstalling the 8 inch barb fitting, I run a bead of silicone around the threads to create an airtight seal. Next, I carefully trim with the utility knife any excess silicone that may interfere with creating the airtight seal, trimming it flush at the end. I also carefully remove the excess silicone from the inner sidewall. I align the mating surfaces of the two halves. Holding the two halves together, I place the first PVC end cap onto what would be the bottom portion of the assembly. I use one of the scrap rings from the end caps to help hold the two halves together. Then I place the end cap with the barb fitting over the other side of the assembly, completing the airtight chamber. To evacuate the air, I'm using a vacuum test which I bought at an auto parts store for around 20 bucks. This test kit comes with a vacuum gauge attached and a purge valve to release the pressure. Next, I connect the rubber adapter to the hose. Then I connect it to the barb fitting on the chamber. I apply some pressure to the end caps to ensure a positive seal while squeezing the handle of the vacuum test unit. This evacuates the air from the chamber which is indicated by the gauge. Once I verify that there are no leaks, I release the vacuum with the purge valve. Once the air pressure is equalized, I remove the hose from the barb fitting and easily disassemble the chamber components. Because this design is modular, I fabricated an additional chamber tube 6 inches in length. I use the same method for this tube as I did with the 2 inch chamber tube. Once completed and dried, I used the vacuum test kit to verify that it would hold the proper vacuum also.
Vacuum chambers are a good way to remove unwanted air bubbles from resin castings, so I plan to use this one in some future projects. I hope you enjoyed watching me create this prototype. If so, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching.